Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Welcome to the All In Podcast. We're going to be talking about uh, the patch 12.17 uh, preview. So there's a lot of changes uh, coming out, and this is going to directly affect the world's patch. So um, notably three champions, MF, Maokai, and Hecarim got getting some big changes, but uh, we'll go over those at the end. Uh, but the first change we can look at, Twisted Fate is a big change for pro play. Um, yeah, what are your so thoughts on this, you're Kevin? Usually them raising the AP ratio isn't too big of a deal early game. You're not going to have that much AP, so maybe there's some obscure time where your Q max will like barely kill the minions at the back after one item uh, in one wave, the casters, but eh, I think that's okay. The mana cost reduction is nice. TF does use like a decent bit of mana, and if you're trying to keep pressure in lane, you can't always be tossing blue cards, right? So I think this means that where you they want to see TF at Worlds. Like This is clearly a TF is really cool. It's really flashy. All the like Playmakers love playing this, so I think it'll probably push them into viability. We saw them a little bit in playoffs in some of the regions, so why yeah, wouldn't they, right? Yeah, we did. We we saw him mm -hmm. in uh, LEC, I believe. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I agree that I think the, I mean, so TF builds usually don't build a ton of AP. So in general, they have like those utility builds with like Everfrost, Zonia's Rapid Fire and stuff. Um. So. It won't help that much, but what TFs normally do is actually they build boots early, so they don't like rush Lost Chapter. So the mana could actually help a lot in the early game. Um, and then, you know, the, especially the first level six ulti, you're usually sitting in lane without any mana sustain at all. Uh, and it costs 100 mana to just cast uh, your ulti. So it could be a big deal for his first ulti, but we'll see. Uh, Kassadin getting some, seems like some pretty big buffs. Uh, one second off of Q and 10 mana off of Q. Um, have not seen this champion at all in pro play, but well, I didn't uh, know that you, right. They call him Cassastin, but uh, as far as the <laughs> as far oh. as the actual <laughs> buffs are, I mean, it's nice, right? <laughs> One second off is essentially like ten percent, a little bit over ten percent CDR. So that's or under ten percent CDR. So that's nice and all. Yeah. Uh, I've only seen like one cast and picked once. I think maybe it was LCC regular season or maybe LCK. I don't know. It it didn't do anything. It just they got outscaled and like or not outscaled. They got destroyed early game and then didn't get anywhere. Wow. Is this nice? It's all right. Yeah. Is it going to be enough to put him to mid? I don't think so. Unless you're just like a casted in like main who has a comp built around it. It might be a cheese pick, but I don't see this being anything for pro play. Yeah, I think the problem with pro play and casting is just he does nothing for so long. Even when you hit level six, he kind of still doesn't do anything. <laughs> like you're, you're really waiting for the Everfrost uh, spike for him to actually be useful. And it just takes you long. And I'm going to be honest, the level 16 casted in Dream, it takes a long ass time to get there. And it's just not as powerful, I think, as it used to be in the game. There's like other champs that can do a similar thing. Like, have you seen Gwen? She's one shotting you and she's like, level 11 or something you know so yeah i can kind of agree that this probably doesn't do much um rel w dismount move speed is going up which is nice because uh if you ever played rel and you mess up your w you are just you move like a snail <laughs> it's really depressing uh, but trade-off is uh e cooldown it's a flat 15 so nobody so basically don't max e anymore i think is what riot's trying to tell us but uh I don't know. I've played. Yeah. Well so the E cooldown being normalized from 18 to 11 seconds down to 15 is like a buffer early on, right? I don't think you max E first, as far as I can tell. And even if you did, like it still gets you a stronger yeah. point early on. <laughs> the move speed is big. I mean, 30 MS is more than tier one boots. And the way <laughs> the yeah. the speed at which regular rel or unmounted rel goes is like kind of criminally slow. So. I'm glad that they're putting this in, but it will, I think she has some other issues right now in terms of her reliability and just how hard it is to execute. So if you're not a rel player and you're playing to some like enchanters, like you could just easily mess up, right? And get punished really hard. It might be enough for yeah. like a core JJ to pick it, but yeah. I, I, you've got to be like really into the character to pick it. I unless i'm underestimating the e cooldown but i don't think it's enough to make it a meta pick just a niche pick yeah 
I think it's just going to be a niche pick, and honestly, it's going to be one of those super late picks where you want to engage. Because her engage is super broken, right? Flash flash RW or whatever the combo <laughs> is. I actually don't know how to execute it. Whatever that crazy, fast flash combo is that's basically like unavoidable engage, that stuff is always going to be in the game. But I do think um, another thing that really hurts Rel is that Hex Flash is disabled uh, globally right now. I don't know if that's ever going to get fixed for pro play. But if Rel doesn't have Hex Flash, I, we're 100% not seeing this champion in pro play. Um, if Hex Flash does get a fix, we maybe we see yeah. it uh, pop up here and there. But um, yeah, it, she's just a. I feel like she just needs a full. I did want to mention right? though. Um, yeah, but uh, I did look it up. You do max E second. It's W first okay. and then E second. That makes a lot of sense. So um, it's gonna be. That's just a buff, right? Because you don't ever really get to the point where you're getting points. You know, past. You know, level. The point where Rel is useful, right? She's always going to have it because maxing E second, it doesn't matter for her support uh, and yeah. pro pro play experience. Um, all right, now we can go to Graves. R damage is up by 25 at all ranks. And then Q cooldown is being adjusted from 12 to 8 to 13 to 7. Um, I have Those a lot of thoughts on this. That would be great for myself. They was trimmed down like 50 damage off his R a while ago, and like that did hurt a lot. Uh, this is nice getting it back to a, yeah. a decent point. 275 doesn't sound like a lot, but at rank one, I mean, that's a lot of damage. That's a base value. Uh, the Q cooldown is a buff, actually. Like, yeah, sure. You're going to yeah. be down one more second at rank one, but you max that first. So it, it is just a straight, it, it's almost yeah. a straight buff. Like, unless you're fighting level one with Graves or level two with Graves with your EQ leveled, right? Um, so this is just a buff later yeah. on um and you're going to be using a lot of q rotations on grace he doesn't get a lot of natural cdr on some of his builds including the build with eclipse including the build with shield bow. it's just hard to get cdr so these trimming seconds off his spells is a big deal and yeah uh i think graves is already an okay character and yeah. in the right hands this is enough to push him over the edge into pro play because this is a character a lot of players who play him want an excuse to play yeah, that's that's very true. He is uh, a beloved champion, and rightfully so. He's very broken conceptually. Um, but there is a very popular build right now. Uh, it's the Gore Drinker and like Black Cleaver, Frozen Heart, um, just super tank build. And that build is very, very strong right now. Um, so you do get a lot of CDR. And that build, which is lacking a lot of damage. I mean, the 25 on R, that's just so massive for that build. Um, I will say that the Q cooldown, it doesn't actually... So it matters when you're doing the Gore Drinker build, and it matters when like you're in really long sustained fights for other builds uh, for Graves. But the biggest thing for me is that the Q cooldown really helps his, uh, lane Graves. Because that's when your Q cooldown actually matters. Because um, for most camps, you're using one Q, maybe two Qs, and the one second isn't going to matter. But lane Graves, when you're wave clearing and you're poking, um, this is going to matter a lot. So maybe top lane Graves comes back. I wouldn't be surprised. I think it's in a pretty decent spot, honestly, and these might push it over. Uh, the R damage, of course, I mean, that's just going to help him snowball, right? Like, this is a champion that has some early game agency, but scales into ridiculous territories. So giving it an early game R damage buff is going to help him snowball just that much more. So yeah. I think we're going to see it. I think we're going to see him. Um, Nocturne. Attack speed ratio went up a little bit, so that's his. I'm guessing that's his base attack speed ratio, obviously. Um, and then his passive cooldown went down by a wow. second. Um, so this awesome. is actually a bigger deal than it seems. So the AS ratio is actually what every attack speed item scales off of. Now Nocturne doesn't naturally build that much attack speed, but if yeah. he takes something that gives him like lethal or something or hail, he will get a lot more out of it. Point oh. Is it, what is it 0.06 is actually a lot of attack speed for your attack speed ratio. This passive cooldown going down by seconds just nice. Uh, we already saw a little bit of mid nocturne in some of the regions. I remember, I think NA maybe played it once, and LEC and LEC definitely LEC. played it once. It was LEC. Uh, yeah, played and into I believe a LPL and Dwayne B mid, played it yeah. once as well. Um, yeah. They actually went with that one though. Um, I think okay. it's the cooldown on the passive is nice yeah. for jungle because you will be using that a lot in jungle. Um, it is a little weird. The way his swipe works in jungle is he kind of already gets the two-second reduction anyway, so it, it being an odd number is a little weird, but there are times it'll help when you're kiting and stuff. Like, it just edges out and it helps your sustainability, which is nice. 
Um, the AS ratio is huge. I, this is, t at a glance at least, this seems like a very big number. Um, I just have to see what the meta builds are and what like people will be using with it. If you're going like that inspired uh, Anathema's chain build, like this, I mean, this is still nice, but it's not as impactful. Yeah, I, I do think it's, most players do go Stridebreaker and that has attack speed. I think it has like 40% or 50% attack speed. And then you have lethal tempo uh, also. So it, it can actually make a big deal even on like the meta builds, even on the inspired build where you go Stridebreaker into tank uh, or into utility items. So this will still help his early game a lot. Um, I would actually not even mind seeing, because we are an enchanter meta and there's a lot of these melee fighters like Nocturne that if they do get ahead early, which their kit is you know, designed to get ahead at level 6, um, you throw an Enchanter onto Nocturne, like a Yumi, or even a Lulu uh, in team fights. Nocturne will carry you and have a ton of value in the mid game for tons of fights. Like, you know, if your ADC or your mid laner gets blown up, and you, but you have a fed Nocturne and you have an Enchanter, uh, he can clean up a team fight very, very well. So... Um, I'd be interested to see what happens with this champion to see if we, we get any uh, any any pro more pro play presence because um, his ulti is just insane for pro play, right? Being able to block out vision, really mess with TPs and coordination, giving him bo extra dueling power is a big deal. And then his clears are just going to be faster as well. So I actually do think we're going to see some more Nocturne. Um, Ezreal. E cooldown going down by two seconds. Um, this is actually a revert of a nerf that he saw a year ago, maybe earlier this year. I don't remember, but uh, th this exact nerf uh, yeah. is being reverted. So for reference, two <laughs> years ago, they thoughts. took out Arcane Shift from 25 seconds to 28 and 13 at rank 5 to 16. So it's not a 100% revert, but it's basically a revert, right? Like they were just like, oh, yeah, we messed up. Ezreal getting yep. this back is massive. The way he works, everyone knows how he works. He gets 1.5 seconds back on a Mystic shot for all of his regular, or actually for all of his abilities, and that's that's massive for his E. Um, yep. We already saw a little bit of this played again. I keep saying this, but like it's interesting that the characters we saw a bit of play are all getting buffs. Uh, Danny played this kind of infamously yep, in his sure. series against C9, and like I mean that those two seconds matter a, a ton, dude. So this is big. We'll see him played, especially some of the Asian AD Cures love Ezreal. Like, if they can, with the durability patch and, like, this added in, like, this makes him a lot more reliable and less, less scary late game. Because you're going to have so much ability haste anyways. And two seconds off of the base value of a spell that's basically flash on an Ezreal, oof, that's massive. He's definitely yeah. getting played. Maybe top yeah. five AD carries then. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, I don't know the matchups into the meta ADCs except from what kind of Alistair and pro, pro players have said a little bit of, but apparently he doesn't have very good matchups in any meta ADC. He has it a really rough into Lucian, into Sivir, uh, into Zeri, um, and I guess Kalista, he just loses lane, but he can kind of outrange his stuff. So maybe that's like the main thing holding Ezreal back, but his kit, I mean... He's one of the few champions that can actually apply Serpent's Fang. He can build it, and it's not troll in his build because he doesn't go crit, right? Um, so he is could be an interesting answer uh, to Enchanter shieldy comps because um, your poke, you can even fit a Ravenous Hydra in there and go full poke Ezreal. Um, and uh, there's a lot of Enchanters that actually don't do very well in the poke. Lulu, for example, uh, is more about anti-burst and not anti-poke. Um, it's hard to... Have your shield up timings to block all this poke. So Ezreal could fit into a poke comp. That could be a meta answer to something like a, a Lulu. But um, when you have stuff like Zeri and Sivir running around, you don't really want to pay poke because they just run at you with bonus move speed. So um, we will see if Ezreal comes back. But big buff. A lot of players love to play him. Um, Camille, passive HP shield going up and E bonus AD ratio going up. Oh, Interesting uh, Camille, thoughts, I think, Kevin? is a really good character for pro play in the sense of like it's very visceral what it does is really flashy and it sets up big team plays like big wombos right it has ultimatum is one of the strong hexic ultimatum herald is one of like the most definitive like let's beat up someone uh spells in the game uh this once again fudge played this actually he played a camille game right and 
if you're seeing this stuff be yeah. viable in playoffs, right? People are picking it in really important matchups, do or die matchups for Worlds. Like, don't be surprised if you see like Camille players play it more. What I would have liked is for Camille to get more buffs to go back into jungle. I think that's when she was the coolest character. Uh, she could like do the most, but it was a little toxic. The ganks are very annoying, and it does way too much damage for a jungler. So <laughs> yeah. I get it. Uh, I think very it's broken. nice. <laughs> uh, she still is impeccable blind. She has to have matchups that she she's picked into. And ideally, yep. you have people who know how to play her. And so that's... I keep saying this. The Asian top laners would love Camille as well. Like, this is, There's some like monster top laners out there who just like spam this character. So it'd be really nice to see some flashy play and some duels, but we might still just see Sejuani and stuff and people just be like, eh. Yeah. I uh, I think these these changes are really, really... can be really, really big in her bad matchups. So I think there's an argument to be made that the passive shield... Oftentimes in top lane trades, uh, when Camille procs her shield, you just walk away. Um, but there are other times when Camille procs her shield and she's in like a losing matchup or she's getting ganked. And she's a very um, slippery champion. So when you do gank her, she if she has her ease up, she almost always gets away. But sometimes your ease like, you know, has a, is a couple seconds away. And the shield makes a big difference. Like it is a large... Uh, shield that she gets from her passive, and I think that when you're in a when you're the type of champion that is so on the fringe of like, if you're ahead, you can one v nine the game, you can jump in and one shot the enemy carry and get out. If you're behind, like <laughs> you're actually just useless. <laughs> you jump in and you die instantly. You do no damage, right? You don't have enough time to proc your true damage at all. Um, stuff like this passive HP shield that. It's just such a big deal for a squishy champion that plays on the edge of uh, team fights and the edge of skirmishes and stuff. And it's just going to boost her ability to stay relevant in times where she's camped, she falls behind, she thinks she has a counter matchup, but then maybe something weird happens in the draft and they switch things up on her. So this really protects the Camille pick, I think, from falling behind. And then the E bonus ratio, right? It just helps her one-shot combo, like the E flash into Q, ulti, uh, and then true damage Q, that combo just gets a big boost in like damage where she's al already doing a ton and just adding a little extra can, you know, break her into near OP territory. So I think these are very scary buffs to put on a champion that is just on the fringe of being very pro, pro prevalent. So um, we shall see what goes on with that um, set buffs. Uh, WAD ratio is going up by 5%. Very small, but uh, it is a little bit. And the E slow is going from 50 to 70%. Yeah, so Bipo did a little thing about because he's been pretty famous for playing set a couple times now on top lane and doing really well on it. He talked about how the E into W is a true combo yep. early game because people usually don't have the move speed or tenacity to get out of the center yep. if you do it correctly, right? Uh, at 70%... I might be wrong, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that just means it's even harder to avoid and you would either need a dash or you need some amount of like tenacity to get out in time. So if it, it works the way I think it does, it means that his window of just doing true damage is much higher. Also, the 5% uh, bonus AD is also really nice because of the way that spell works and the way it scales. If I understand correctly, if its ratio goes up by that amount, then it, it amplifies by a lot when you absorb a lot of damage, right? So if it's at 20 to 25, I'm pretty sure Haymaker... Oh, we have it up. Nice. That means that Haymaker is going to go to the yeah. moon uh, when it's at max stack, right? Okay. Uh, I have no idea. It doesn't actually... Yeah. Let me look it up on Linkpedia. <laughs> I could not read yeah, that. Yeah, tooltips, guys, in League of Legends aren't the most reliable thing or the clearest thing. I mean, they try their best, I guess, but... No. You know, they should make a Leaguepedia that's, like, actually sanctioned by Riot. I don't right? know like, why, why, do, why is it I a mean, third party? I mean, Mobile Esports is sanctioned <laughs> by Riot, and that website is doo-doo. Um, yeah, so the bonus AD ratio, it's actually going to increase. Um, so it's plus 25% of huge. his grit bar, which is... I. That's huge. So it's like instead of being plus twenty percent of, it's not just adding like five percent uh, per hundred. Like that doesn't. I guess that doesn't even make sense, right? That's 5 just terrible, of, right? Per hundred bonus AD. That's just five AD. So yeah, that just doesn't make sense. So it's actually it's increasing the percentage that he uses of his grit, which is based 
on his max health, which is so basically you just build a bunch of HP and AD, and this da- yeah. this that it just does a ton of damage, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, that seems like a pretty big buff if you can get like that uh, that EW combo off. That is very reliable. I think if you get a stun, it's just obviously it's easy mode. But if you just have a slow dude, fit seventy percent at level one. Yeah. That's like basically a stun. Like it's so high. Um, so those are big buffs. I think the WAD ratio is obviously better for top lane, but just that E slow, like that might just put set support in because sure you're gonna be doo doo in lane, but you go and roam, right? You're level three set, you mm-hmm. E somebody, they're stunned. They they can't run away. Um, so maybe we see some set support also. Um there is like set mid stuff too that I think is maybe reasonable because uh um there's a lot of mages in mid lane that like don't put on any pressure at all in the early game like azir and oriana and already and stuff mm-hmm. you can just be a set and just tank everything um so there are options there who do we see we saw bdd destroy our very own bjergsen on yeah. zillion uh, i with, will with say that mid, the nerf so... to second wind does hurt yeah, some of that down. anti-mage like traditional like oh he could just sit there and take you out the potions used to be stronger before and so does second wind right True, and yeah. that does hurt set a bit but at least in top lane definitely going to see him a little bit more from the people who like him and then support maybe the occasional player will play like who he might pick, yep. pick it right because he loves that ca- character and it's now just objectively better yeah that's true. I, I think that, honestly, blind orns, we should not be seeing them. Uh, it kind of sucks for NA because I think we do the most blind orns. But when Camille and Set are already strong getting buffs like this, you just don't want to play blind orn, right? And there's already Fiora hanging out, so Gwen hanging out. So mm-hmm. it is rough for, for tank top lanes right now. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh. Nami Electrocute nerf. Finally, this is a nerf I think we've been thinking about since last year at Worlds. E only counts as one damage distance um, for Electrocute. So basically, what that means you can't go in with Nami. I'm so glad this happened. This is the exact right way to do it. We've been talking about it for a while. Long story short, this means that people stop getting beta into Nami Illusion unless they really have a plan with it. And honestly, as a Nami player, like it's not hard to proc Electrocute anyway. So this doesn't matter. If you're just playing Nami correctly instead of abusing the dumb mechanic that it used to have, you can proc it instantly. You just auto W like and if you have an E attached, it's so free, right? So, I don't know. I, I think this is correct. Uh, yeah. We might just not see her much, though, because her a lot of her reason of existence was, like, <laughs> to empower Lucian lanes. Outside of that, she's... I think there are some really sh- crap yep. Nami players out there. Like, people who just, like, tidal wave to start the fight. And I'm just like, what, what the... There was, like, they weren't even a choke. You just missed. Like, what was that? So, uh, I'm... I think it's, it's a buff to the bad players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah it's a it's a buff to her win rate <laughs> maybe in a weird way because uh she'll see less play um yeah I, I think that lucian nami has already been falling off really hard right just it is like obviously a strong combo but the amount of presence we're seeing of it is definitely overrated on how good it is um but i mean there's a chance we still might just see it because players are so good at uh, lucian players love playing lucian Nami is still arguably going to be his best lane partner, right? Maybe you can put a Lulu on there for other on-hit effects, but nothing really does, like, on-hit slows on your auto attacks, right? Like Lucian. Uh, um, it's, just, it's just a crazy combo. So I think we might still see it, but expect it to get more flame when we see it in pro play, <laughs> even more so than, than it gets now. Um Tarek base MR 32 to 28. So sad. E cooldown 15 to 11 to 16 to 12. Also sad. Um, I, also I never don't. see Tarek. What are your thoughts soul, on this? This might be the more <laughs> solo Q focus pat buff. Like we saw him like maybe once or twice in the regular season. I remember there might have been a liquid comp or something that might have had it. It's, yep. Someone had it, right? I I don't, I don't yep. get this. I actually would have. If you yeah. asked me to predict which supports would have been buffed, I was like engage supports and Tarek should get buffs because. Tarek is hard. It's hard to execute. He gets punched in lane already, and it chances lowering his MR by four at rank one. Like, what did he do to you guys? Uh, that's annoying. It means Tarek is definitely not being <laughs> played. Maybe there's yeah. some weird ass funnel strategy going on somewhere. And like, again, something that I think people should note when they're looking at patches. There's like usually buffs that are and nerfs that are oriented to a pro play, and there are some that are like 
oriented to solo queue. And something that people don't really notice is like it also takes they have to take into account the whole world solo queue, not just ours and NA. So like there's just crap that like really is really powerful, maybe yeah. in Southeast Asia or in China or in Korea or something like that. And we just never see it here, right? Just like our pro scene. So uh, this someone's abusing something somewhere. Whenever I see a Tarek nerf, that's what I think of. Because if I don't see Tarek every game and he's getting nerfs like of this degree, that's pretty crazy. Um, I'm really surprised that the one of the nerfs was targeted as stun, especially. Like yeah. that's such a key ability for him. Like I thought they would have like, oh, let's tone down his tankiness on his W as well, whatever. But this is pretty bad. Um, you have less reason to pick Tarek again. I don't get it. Yeah. I I there is a um I think he's like a challenger or grandmaster one trick in NA called Light Rocket. He plays Tarek Jungle and he really brings that champion's limits out to show. It, he does some really crazy stuff just like autoing and constantly healing mm -hmm. and um getting tons of stuns off. Um so Maybe he caused these nerfs, but there's also uh, Nila is getting some attention, and Nila Tarek, even though we've never actually seen the combo in pro play, I'm pretty sure, uh, that is considered a really mm, strong combo. It's a really good kill lane, Nila Tarek, uh, for bot lane. But we never actually saw it in pro play. It's a solo queue thing for sure. Um, so that's interesting, right? Because, you know, jungle Tarek like, doesn't really care that much about base MR. Cares a little bit about the, the E cooldown, but definitely bot lane, I guess, is where this is happening. They want the enchanters hmm. to be able to kill Tarek. Um, I I don't agree with it, right? I mean, unless there is a specific interaction with like some stupid funnel strat that's broken, then yeah, I'd nerf it. But otherwise, it's like I bet we could look it up right now, and his play rate is tiny. I, I won't look it up. But uh, yeah. all right, we can move on to his year. Um, WAP ratio Ooh, going from wow. 60 to 50 percent, and then E cooldown going from 19 oh, to 15 to 22 moly. to 16. Uh, yeah, yeah so Azir's been a staple pick in the meta. He's the like the de facto like, oh, I don't, I want to like play safe. He's not actually a hyper hyper carry like he used to be because he his ability to move around soldiers and do stuff aren't like the glory days, and his burst and his Q aren't like the glory days either. But he's still very good in in the right scenario, right? He burns out objectives really well, which is important because dragons are buffed uh, in terms of health. Herald is important. Like he's really good. Uh, this nerf to his E especially is probably enough to push him out of like banned. Four out of five games, right? That we saw on um, NALCS or playoffs. Yeah. So it's big. His W is also his bread and butter. Like it's a lot of his output. It. I. I'm kind of surprised they hit him that hard just before Worlds when everyone's been spamming him. I kind of feel like that's kind of unfair to the people who've been putting all the work in. But yeah. As I glance down the list, it looks like a lot of things that've been yeah. spamming playoffs are getting nuked. So we'll. This this narrative is continuing. It looks like holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like the uh, the world's meta is going to be pretty different, or at least attempting to be very different from the playoff meta. Because yeah, I mean, ten percent off the W. That's like the main thing that Azir does. It's like Callista going from one hundred percent AD to ninety percent AD. Like when you auto attack a champion, like that's that's pretty large. Um, you get a ton of attack speed on Azir, right? This affects not only his damage against champions, but like you said, damage against objectives. Damage just pushing the wave, right? A lot of champions, especially mid lane mages, they're gated by how good they are, by how fast they can clear the wave in mid lane. Um, so if you're if you're slowing all this stuff down at the same time, you're making him more vulnerable, right? So um, a lot of Azirs, they like to use their E frequently in fights to reposition. Not necessarily to always go in or escape, but just to reposition to do more damage um, and try to still score the edges of team fights. I mean, this is going to hurt everything. So, I mean, he was first pick, first ban prio in a lot of regions. We'll we'll see what happens there, but I imagine he's going to fall off a decent amount. Um, Ari is going down. Uh, also, base HP 570 to 550 E duration. Uh, is 1.4 seconds to 1.2 seconds at rank uh, when one. When I play Ari, I'm actually so what are your thoughts on this, last Kevin? or maybe second to last sometimes. Uh, that's kind of big. Uh, but at the same time, yeah. 1.2 is still more than enough to do your combo. It's probably just gives you less leeway for ganks and setup for ganks. Uh, losing health, annoying. I think Ari is fairly balanced, but she is 
like she can snowball and she is quite good in pro. So I think these buffs, these nerfs are actually a little bit more reasonable than Azir's nerfs. Like Azir's nerfs were like pretty harsh. These are fine. She'll still see play. Uh, it'll just tone her down a little bit. But honestly, it, it's whatever. It's just like to make her a little bit more reasonable, give some breathing room for more characters in mid. Yeah, I do think that they are bigger than they would be on other champions because Ari's identity is about sort of snowballing early and getting ahead early. And um, a lot of Ari's, especially how they're played in pro play from what I've seen, is they kind of just get on your face to make sure they can land their Everfrost and their E. So uh, this breaks that little like timing window where you know, if you land an E, you have to do your Everfrost a little earlier or someone can flash out of it. It makes Tenacity a bit more valuable uh, too to get out of Ari combos. Um, I don't know, if you've ever been hit by an Ari charm and you have no Tenacity, it does feel like you're stunned for five years. You're just walking towards her for a long ass time. <laughs> um, so it'll help that as well. Um, the 20 HP, I mean, it's like what? It's like a, a couple caster minion hits. It's gonna affect a little bit, right? If she gets ganked pre six, this will probably that, that's that'll be the biggest time that'll, that'll matter. Um, and she heals to her passive heals. So any champion that heals, their base HP actually makes a big difference more than other champions that don't heal. So um, I think they're actually fairly sizable. Um, Silas, base HP going from five ninety five to five ninety five. Let's just. Uh, Let's just pretend that's not there. We can assume that maybe he's going down by like 10, 20 HP, right? Because um, they messed that up. And then Q cooldown is going uh, from yeah. 10 to 6 uh, to so the, It's to actually, 10. yeah, it's just down by 20. I saw it in a Reddit thread earlier because the writer was like, oh, yeah, we messed up. Uh, Q cooldown down by, down by a second. Okay. Uh, this is, in my opinion, a bigger deal than Charm going down. Um, so, yeah, it's annoying. It will hurt their ability to push. It will hurt their ability to just do trades. Silas is a is a cooldown monster. Like once he gets enough cooldown, like these yep. numbers do matter. The bases matter. Uh, this one is probably worse than yep. the Ari nerf, in my opinion. And Silas is something that Eastern regions like a lot, but we don't play as much. Even though I, a couple of our good players do, but it's not as popular as it should be for how powerful it is and how many OP alts are in the meta. So yeah, the the thing is all the meta dudes are getting nerfed at the same time so honestly they might yeah. just still keep playing them the same way and think like well i mean the thing that beats it also or the thing that i play into is also weaker so whatever this is like the pro way of doing things so i hope it adds more yeah. variety but nerfing all of them at the same time True. is kind of lame yeah it it's it's interesting i do think this this nerf is bigger than Ari's. i mean silas is I think last time I checked was the most played champion in the entire game uh, for solo queue at least. Um, so rightfully deserving of nerfs. Like when it gets to that point, like yeah, you got to nerf that. Um, the champion is pretty crazy. I think it's pretty cracked right now because what you can do is you'll you'll see it in pro play, right? You'll see someone go Everfrost, Lucidity, Zonia's, and like Banshee's Veil, and you're like, why is that a no damage build? But he's still one shotting me. It's because his cooldowns get so, so low. He can proc Conqueror so fast. Um, it doesn't matter that he doesn't build any AP. He uh, just constantly throws out his E's and Everfrost and cooldowns. And um, he does damage through just mm -hmm. that. He doesn't need to build AP if his cooldowns are low enough. So he's pretty crazy. Um, there have been a lot of Q-Max builds. There's a, there's a Q-Max into W-Max. And there's also a Q-Max into E-Max build. Those are weird as hell, but this is definitely going to hurt that a lot. Um, the HP uh, nerf is also going to hurt that because well, you're just not healing as much from your W, mm -hmm. and you have less HP to work with from the, the get-go. So I think these are pretty big Silas nerfs, but people love playing him. He's so fun, and he's kind of OP right mm -hmm. now. So he might actually still say, stay around. Um, good counter pick, champion. Trundle. Ooh, this one hurts. Hurts the Team Liquid fans. Uh, WCD, yeah, 15 to 11 to 18 That's, that's to 14, huge. Three that's seconds, dude. That's like... It's like 20% more cooldown or something like that. Like, something crazy like that. So, yeah. That's massive. Uh, for a character that, like, his W is so powerful, especially for jungle clear, it's going to hurt him. It's going to hurt him a decent amount. Uh, I don't know the exact timings, but you might have, to have, like, some weird downtime between camps now. Uh, certain camps. So, I think this is really awkward... It's yep. a good nerf. Trundle is pretty OP and doesn't take that much skill. Like, 
but he is still playable. His power comes from his pillar. His power comes from, like, as long as you can get the W in for by the time you gank, like, yeah, you might have a slightly slower clear, but it's not the end of the world. It does bring him in line a bit. Um, yeah, that's that's a pretty, three seconds is not something you usually see added to an ability, yeah. but Azir's also got the three second treatment, so sucks to suck. Yep. That's true. Yeah. I do think that uh, this is a weird nerf because there are so many times where you press W once in an entire fight or skirmish and that's it. And then, you know, in that instance, it doesn't matter at all, the cooldown nerf. But in terms of his clear, right, you know, strategically, I'm sure Santorin has the perfect spot to place his W so that he can clear one camp and then clear the next and still uh, benefit from it. That, that stuff might change, right? You might need to be more resourceful for, with your WCD. Um, overall, just moving around the map, too. I know people just spam W on cooldown because he has no mana problems, right? So you just spam it on cooldown to move around. <laughs> move speed is a big deal. We're going to talk about that Wukong in a second. Um, so I think that, yeah, this is one of those subtle nerfs that's going to make him weaker in ways that aren't obvious, which I think are the saddest kind of nerfs like because like you nerf a champion, and you don't even see why, but he's just worse, you know? I think those are, those are the most feel-bad nerfs, because, well, you can't be like, but look, he does so much less or more damage in this instance, right? That's so easy to be like, yeah, that, that nerf worked, or that buff worked. Mm -hmm. But this one, it's like it's super invisible, super subtle. Um, so we'll see what happens to Trundle. I still think he's going to be quite strong in the meta. Uh, Wukong, I got a lot of thoughts about this champion. Base attack speed going down by a lot. Basically the inverse of Nocturne's. Uh, and base moves be going down by yeah, um, so he gets to about he gets about uh, what are your thoughts on this yeah almost the same nerf a little bit less of a nerf than the buff nocturne guy that's big every jungler knows attack speed is super valuable like I, I really don't have to get too far into it like and I think for him it's not the end end of the world yeah. because I don't think any of Wukong's items have attack speed in it except for maybe a rare triforce build um, but everything else doesn't have attack speed so it's not as big big but it's still going to hurt his clear times. Uh, base 5 MS, gone are the days where we meme this, like, this is a huge stat. And your MS as a jungler, like, don't touch that. If you touch that, like, win rates will drop uh, for for the for the same player. Obviously, some people, just bad players might not pick. Will constantly win rate might go up. This is These are just two, like, I hate this jungler. We see it, let's see it less. Nerfs. Um, mayhaps not enough to put him all the way out of contention, yep. <laughs> but enough to make him not spam. He was already starting to fall off a little bit for some reason in some regions, but, like, he was pretty giga busted during playoffs. So this puts him into the line of like pickable, still a good jungler. This is good for Team Liquid because they don't play Wukong well. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, yeah, I think these nerfs are, uh, they, they feel, they seem pretty big to me. I play a ton of Wukong. The champion is broken, so needs nerfs. Um, these ones are bigger for solo queue than I think they are for pro play. In pro play, you are usually just looking for Wukong for that bursty team fight. Um, in solo queue, though, like you're skirmishing a lot, you're fighting when your ulti's down, like you're in a lot more like one v ones, two v twos, three v threes in solo queue, and I think that's a much bigger deal because uh, well, less move speed, less base attack speed, right? You're clearing your camp slower, uh, and you're getting to places slower, so it's just less opportunities for you to capitalize on. Um, and opportunities are much more random in solo queue. Um, so that's a big deal. He does actually have an attack speed steroid on his E, uh, which you max second. So that is also a noticeable amount of DPS loss in the late game. Um, coupled that with the fact that his Q cooldown is reduced by auto attacks, it's actually a noticeable DPS decrease. Your burst is the exact same, but your DPS is going to go a lot down in extended fights. Um, and Another thing with um, just attack speed and move speed in general, when it comes to bruisers and fighters, if you have less move speed, you're in, you have less opportunities to attack the enemy champion, and it's doubled down on the nerf that you have less attack speed. So you're just going to be casting less Qs, and that's his main damage ability. It's his main synergy with Divine Sunderer. So if you have a couple less Qs in a team fight, that's like tons and tons of damage we're talking like hundreds of damage and hundreds of points of healing so i think that this is a very big nerf for solo queue wukong and any games of pro play where things get very skirmishy and stuff um this is going to hurt wukong's just snowballing potential and everything and 
Um, yeah, he's be much more reliant on the fact that he has to get a good EQ ulti and knock a bunch of people up and coordinate with his team. It just makes him more pro focused and less solo queue focused, which I, I kind of hate. I think if you want to take away his ability to be so strong in pro play, you need to look at his ulti more. But this stuff just makes him as a worse champion in, in all the situations that he's just being Wukong. Um, so sad to see, but also maybe necessary. Um, Sivir, wish we had Alistar here, but that's okay. Sivir nerf, AD growth is going from 3.2.8. And WAD ratio is losing 5% mm. of her total AD. If I understand how AD growth there. works, this is just the AD per level you gain, as far as I understand. So if that's the case, then like she's losing like 3.4 AD yep. at level 18. I think that's not as big of a deal. The ratio on the W, though, is pretty pretty big. I mean, that ability can multi-hit on the same person now. And like the Sivir rework, I think, was successful. It made her playable. It made her fun and interesting. But it was clearly a little overtuned. I think they're trying to scale her back, but not like... They want her at Worlds, clearly. So she's still going to be played. The five percent is a big deal, though. That like, yeah, it, you have thirty percent as your value, and then you go down to twenty five percent. You're losing one sixth of your va base value in one nerf. That's that's uh sixteen to seventeen percent of a nerf. That's yeah. that's pretty big. On an ability that can hit twice on someone, that starts compounding real quick. So it'll probably hurt her a, quite a decent bit in team fights and stuff. But she's still like way worth picking. Like it's not going to break her. Yeah, I, I still think she will see play. I mean, right now she's first pick for a span prio, so needs a nerf. I mean, just like Wukong, Trundle, and Azir and stuff. If you're first pick for a span, I think seeing nerfs is perfectly reasonable. Uh, funny thing is the AD growth, while tiny, it does actually feed into the WAD nerf because it's based on total AD. So it's, it's a bit of a double whammy nerf in that sense. Um, and then same point that I made about Azir, right? This is a champion that is very reliant on how fast and how well she clears waves. Obviously, when she's ahead, right, the wave's melting. This You're going to not see any change with this WAD ratio. But if you can put a Sivir behind, right, and she does need to add a couple extra autos, or she does need to wait for another Q or W cooldown to clear waves, now you're taxing her mana pool, now you're taxing her time, you're taxing, um, you know, just her trading pattern. So... It could be a, I think it's a bigger nerf if the Sivir falls behind than if she didn't, because, you know, the wave just melts if she's ahead. So um, we'll see how this plays effect, but I, I expect her to still be up there or close to first pick, first ban still. Um, ah, yes, my favorite champion, Renekton. Q damage, the base is going down by a good chunk, 25 at max rank, but it's going up by 20% bonus AD. Uh, and the Q and power yeah, just so following doing some about quick the math, same logic. Like, so essentially what, what happens is he'll do slightly less damage at base levels. It means you can't do a tank build, but if you build two items and roughly a little over 100 AD, you will start eclipsing the old number. So that just means that he's stronger in the mid game and late game uh, afterward, right? Yeah. At three items, you're just objectively stronger. And it'll keep scaling if you keep building AD bruiser items. Uh, it means you can't abuse certain tanky items in the game, uh, which is annoying for his itemization but in certain matchups like this isn't a nerf this is actually an adjustment i would say uh however you do pick him for that early game so yeah some of that edge he'll have in the early game will go down i i suspect this might lower his viability in mid especially where you saw him once in a while um but yeah i think this is fine it is yeah. funny that after all this time he finally got a buff and then they're like hey wait, wait, wait. let's like let's move it around a bit Let's change it up a bit again, yeah. Renekton just cannot get away from right. the Riot team's gaze. Or just the community's gaze, right? That poor crocodile. Um, yeah, so once you reach like 100, a little over 100 bonus AD, the, the nerf is actually playing into your favor. And that's usually uh, 100, you get, so it's pretty much a two items, right? Because Gore Drinker is about 55 AD, um, and then Death Dance is about 50 AD. If you're going to build with Blade of the Rune King into full tank, this is actually a sizable nerf, though. Um, so that's an interesting deal, because that is the most popular build, is the Gore Drinker into full tank. Um, but if you do go the the more bruisery Gore Drinker build, this is actually a buff in the mid uh, and late game. Um, I did actually say on a previous podcast, too, Renekton is a stronger champion in pick. Like, it's the same deal with Nocturne, where if you have a Renekton that's relatively ahead and you have an Enchanter on your team, 
this guy will carry you in mid game fights. Like that's that third dragon at 25 minutes, right? You have a relatively strong Renekton, you have an enchanter. He's probably more valuable than your ADC and mid laner at this point in the game. Um, so that is an interesting deal as well. Um, I think this is also going to be, um, it's going to draw the difference between actual Renekton players and players who are just like being Renekton. Because the hardest part about Renekton is playing those mid game fights, and that's where he gets the most value. Um, I kind of like it, honestly, that he's getting nerfed like this because the Bork into full tank build is completely degenerate. Like, there's no way you should build an item with 40 <laughs> AD on a champion that's supposed to be like an AD heavy champion and just one shot people. Like, it's crazy. But Blade of the Rune King is the real problem uh, with that build. So, I would prefer to see a Blade of the Rune King nerf than any changes to Renekton's actual kit. But that is what we get. So. We're still going to see him, guys. Like, let's be real. <laughs> uh, Seeker's Arm Guard. AP going from 20 to 30. Wow. I think we can just talk about mm -hmm. Seeker's Arm Guard, Stopwatch, and Zonia's like, kind of all together. Um, so Stopwatch going up by 100 gold, and then Zonia's going up by 400 gold, but up AP by 15, and up 5 Ability Haste. Guardian's Angel, yeah, similar um, change. Um, that's what are your thoughts on it? That's a good change. It's technically a buff to the slot value efficiency of this item although it does lower the time where you can just get more zanias out uh the 400 gold increase is totally outweighed by 15 yeah. ap5 ability haste that's great um and notably uh as a jungler this means that it's a lot harder to stomach picking this item if you're just not a ap character like volver infamously built this like second or thirds and i was just like what <laughs> what is this world we live in um so i think that's a good change Stopwatch is just getting more expensive by itself is a good change as well. And then GA getting five more AD, it's nice. I, I, I dread it only because it's going to bait more people to picking it when they should be building LDR or Bloodthirster and actually carrying their goddamn team. Like, I, dude, you have enchanters. You have all this survivability, the durability patch happen. And you build GA last item, and then in the final team fight, like, you don't even get touched once, and you just do no damage. It is it tilts me. So this is going to bait some people to building it more in my head. Uh, but the Zanya's change is really smart. I actually really like how they did just did it. Yeah, I, I do think that... Um... It's interesting, right? So I, I've seen a lot of rhetoric that the increase in cost is justified because of the stats you get. And yeah, it is more cost efficient, right? 400 gold for 15 AB and 5 uh, ability haste is super worth it. That is just always worth it, right? Um, in terms of gold value. But the 400 gold in timing, that is a lot of time. That is more than a kill's worth of gold that you need to accumulate to finish the zone is active. So... Whenever you're like, we see in a lot of pro games right now where it's like, there's a fight and not that long after there's another fight. So if you use your 750 gold stopwatch and you have to sit for an extra 400 gold or 300 gold, however you kind of want to do the math in your head, you got to sit longer to get your next active Azonia's Hourglass. I think that's a really big deal because honestly... The active Azonia's Hourglass is so much more impactful than any of the stats it gives. It it kind of is what makes the item feel bad because the stat its stats are so pitiful to accommodate for how broken its active is. But when you get to pro play, um, and you're you're a champion that is basically needing to build Zonia's in a certain situation, I don't think you care about the stats as much as the active and being it up and having it more often. So in my opinion, in most situations, right. You're a person who's building Zonia's as a response to the enemy team comp. This is just a nerf. Like, I would take a cheaper item for, like, no stats for Zonia's because it's the active that is so much more meaningful than the stats you give in that certain instance. Obviously, right, this is better for those instances where you have Zonia's as a backup tool, and basically you build it to deter the enemy from engaging you in, at all. That's actually a thing that we do see happen in pro play, right? Okay, enemy mage builds Zonia's. We're not even going to gauge on him, right? Um, this is a big burf, buff to those situations. Uh, same with Guardian Angel and stuff. But um, I, th I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's getting nerfed. I just think it's, it's, it's just a nerf in my opinion. I, I find it hard for me to think that at least in pro play that it could be considered a buff um, in the situations that it's built. Um, yeah, I think also for solo queue, it, it's pretty hit or miss too, right? It, it, in some situations, it's a buff. Some situations, it's a nerf. 
Uh, I'm hoping that we just stop seeing five stopwatches in a single fight or something. There was a fight in, uh, I think it was XL Fanatic or Rogue Mad Lions. One of, one of those two series that went really long. There's a fight in top lane. There was actually eight stopwatches went off in a single fight. It was, I think it was like seven stopwatches <laughs> and one real Zonias. And I was like, what the hell am I looking at? Um so I hope that stuff kind of stops uh, being because it's, it's just stupid, <laughs> but uh, it's it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, this is a big nerf mm -hmm. to support who don't go uh, commencing watch or whatever because you know, kind of sh shooting out that extra hundred gold as a support is real rough to buy a stopwatch. Um, yeah, so those are the overall changes that we have here, and this is actually going a lot longer than I thought, which is fine. Um, yep. We have misfortune changes. So can you see them on your screen, Kevin? Or all right, perfect. So um I'm just gonna let everybody read this for a second. I don't really want to read it all. I'll just okay, double up Q, physical damage. The base is going up by 20, and the cast time is now gonna match the basic attack speed timer, basic attack timer. Let's just start yep. with Q. Good quality of life. Makes I mean, it cleaner, this is a, a nice lot easier buff, to create right? with it. So, it um, she's gonna just feel really nice with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely it's gonna it's a feel nice buff and obviously more damage. Um, then you have a W buff, right? Getting ten percent more attack speed. You never really think of Misfortune as an attack speed champion, but she is an ADC, so I kind of like that this is a thing. <laughs> um, so that's nice. Um, and then finally, I think this is the thing that is the most contentious is are the E changes, and we will we'll, I think we'll spend longer talking about. Uh, the rest of our kit once we talk about these e changes our cooldowns going up by four seconds in the late game that's a lot uh but and the base damage is going down uh 30 at max rank 10 at early ranks uh but it's getting a 20 percent ap buff and now the slow instead of being scaling 40 to 60 is a 50 percent flat slow that scales with uh four percent of your per 100 hp ap uh so what are your thoughts and let's just kind of take a look at the whole change of mf basically I the idea think of this kind of misses the to mark to crit, to crit in my mind uh so they're trying to make mf not max e right as ad carry so in that sense it, it achieves it right the cooldown's a lot higher later on it's plus four seconds at rank five goodness gracious but like are you trying to incentivize people yep. to go apmf or not uh because if you go apmf you're going to like have some crazy stuff like let's say you have 600 ap right very easy to achieve on an mf or a any ap carry late game that's 74 percent slow aoe for eight ticks like what uh so that's pretty crazy it also means that at rank one oh, yeah. you're already <laughs> at a rank three in terms of slow which is like where it's strong um so ad carries won't max it first right so you you you've hit that sure but you might incentivize that really random and rarely seen, but still seen APMF bot lanes, whereas like Lyandries and whatnot. The only thing that might stop me and make me hesitate is that four seconds might just be too much. It might just be unviable. And if that's the case, then why why'd you bother putting all these ratios in the, in the first place? Is this for ARAM, I guess? <laughs> so you can just do damage? I don't know. Uh, it it, it kind of seems all over the place. It feels like they kind of made her spell really wonky now. Um, I do like the other changes though up to this point. I think they made sense for her. Yeah. Interesting that that was your take. I, I do actually like the change mostly because I think APMF is degenerate. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I personally don't think APMF and Emax stuff mm -hmm. should really be a thing because it's kind of like a no counterplay build. Like she moves faster than you. Her E is really long range. And it's just, a, it's just a crazy amount of slows in CC. So I think that they put the AP ratios and stuff in there to be like, if you want to play APMF, but here's a why little would bit they of candy. Put it there in the first, they should just kill APMF, in my opinion. Like, it's, um, right now, it can be more toxic if, if you play. They do this stuff. They do this stuff all the time. They like they they put in these AP ratios. This I mean, freaking Kha'Zix has an AP ratio on his passive and W, right? They just put it in there to just put it in there they just see like hey if you want to really mess around in like in your random normal game here you go but uh otherwise you know mm -hmm. the build's not legit um it's not like competitive or pro viable so i think that's sort of the aim in that area um i, I don't i don't hate it right it's like if you want to build apmf uh, or you want to build ap kha'zix go right ahead you know it's 
it's a it's a four fun game but i think in terms of competitive viableness leandri's mf into like fully foully that we actually did see some pro players pick i'm pretty sure riot was just like we're axing that all right you want to play apmf here it mm. is but it's not going to be pro viable um so that, that's kind of what i think they're going for but uh, i do like it um she is i like that the e is a it's going to be maxed last um because of the you know the attack speed that they put on w i think now you do have to max it second too because that attack speed is pretty nice um but she's gonna be strong right okay and then there, there's the buff to her ulti right it, it doesn't do that much because uh that takes a long time for that buff to actually make a difference for her ulti but this champion is very well suited as a counter pick already and i think making it so that she actually is an ad carry is just it just makes more sense um because she was just so much focused on a caster and now she can hit people and um it doesn't feel bad I, I i like it like mf should be in the meta as a counter pick to certain comps right like this champ is really good into like backline mages like azir or like i don't know something like a vagar or oriana right like these champs that can't really do anything outside of her e r cast she can double up q and like hit people from long range um yeah i i like it i like it i'm glad that mf is seeing some stuff because she is always exciting to watch to get a crazy bullet time. Okay, moving on. Enough about MF. We don't care about you. We're getting to Maokai. These are exciting. Um, let's just... Uh, there's a lot here. So I don't know how we want to tackle... This is our first uh, patch preview uh, review that we've kind of done. So still getting the kinks out of how to do it. Um, he's getting jungle buffs. Um... I'll read through it. Why not? Getting hit by large jungle monsters uh, reduces your passive cooldown from one second per auto. Uh, your Q base damage is going up later, but down at level one. And now it has percent max health damage, two to three percent, just a little bit. And it deals bonus damage to monsters. That's a big deal. Uh, Sapling toss is just getting the max percent health damage removed. And the base damage is being increased. So if you still want to play the Degenerate, Sapling Toss, Support, Imperial Mandate, Demonic Embrace build, you can still do that. Um, and now it's more focused on your HP and less on uh, base damages. Um, it no longer affects minions. So Lane Maokai can't just instantly one-shot the wave. Um, and the slow is going up by a lot, 10%. And then Empowered is 55%. That's crazy. Uh, and then finally, the R is just getting huge buffs, right? It's just moving faster. And it also gives you move speed. That's new. It gives you move speed when you hit somebody. So if you do hit somebody with a long range ulti, now you can move faster to follow up with your W. That's really cool. Um, so what are your thoughts yeah, on this, I mean, Kevin? I know board, I just said a lot. Buffs. I'm just, glad they're moving him out of support want. and back to jungle. I really liked playing him in jungle in the past, but his clear is just frankly bad in the past. This is this should be enough to put him into the uh, jungle. One of yep. his new specialties will be he will just will not take damage in the jungle. With this new sap magic, basically means you're almost always going to be topped off unless you just like physically are incapable of autoing. I guess uh, it makes it easier to kite with the e sapling toss with the extra slow on it. Like that's literally mm, set up yes. for uh, jungle and just kiting and just uh, that. It looks like if I'm reading Nature's Grass right, it's not just for himself. It raises the movement speed of all champions hits. So this is an AOE team buff. Moves to be on champion hit forty six percent. Right, it's not a slow, wow. so it means Wait. that when your teammates are hit, they're all gaining forty to sixty percent MS for two seconds decaying. Yeah, kind of right. So it's basically Wait, a wall so of like your team is faster, and your opponents are gonna <laughs> need to run the hell away. Or like, and Nami. the spell is like really quick now comparatively, right? So that's massive. I mean, this is just this is gonna be enough to make yeah. them viable. If I was a juggler that can offer an AOE team speed up. Per click engage decent better cleared probably not super fast but better clear than before as well as like he can use the saplings rewards and he can just stay topped up at full health at all times this is everything you need right to make maokai like good for jungle is this going to be allowed for worlds i think it will so if it, if it is then that's i mean uh, we're gonna see some maokai yeah i mean yeah it is yeah I think we might, yeah, I think we might actually see some Maokai, especially when you have, like, Trundle and uh, Wukong getting nerfed and stuff. So, um, 
that's wild. If if you're correct on I it, I, I don't believe what I'm honestly. At either, I don't believe I don't you because it sounds that, too good right? to be true. Um, the fact. <laughs> Yeah, um, I I I'm interpreting it as when Maokai hits an oh, enemy champion that with that his would ulti, be a lot he more gets fair. move speed. But if it's literally if you, yeah, yeah, that that's what I interpret it as. But it's very vague, right? It just says move speed on champion hit. So I mean, we'll see what that means. Because if it's like if it hits your allied champion, which is a champion. And they and you or they get move speed somehow. That is crazy. That is oh, just like reading the thread. You're right. Why, you know, uh, why does one of the writers was saying Malkai will gain to KMS whenever his alt roots a champion, but that means it could keep chaining because they don't all get hit in the same frame, right? So he, do you have a zooming Malkai? I mean, that itself is already silly yeah, to me. So you can just zoom. Oh my god, dude! Just uh, just imagine a tree booking it at you, ready ready to ready to clap some ass. Yeah, that is terrifying and hilarious. I hope we get to see it in pro play. If not, just for the memes, it sounds hilarious. Um, it's just in terms of jungle, right? Like this champion is a little scary to put in jungle because of how strong his early ganks are. W into Q ganks are like almost guaranteed first bloods, and if you do, and then if you don't have a flash, right? So you normally what you do is you flash W because uh, it's pretty easy to space without flash. But if you find a champion that doesn't have flash, you're just running at them over and over again, and you're just killing them on repeat. Because uh, you know, once again, Maokai is not a is a very low econ champion. Very, it would likely be a low econ jungler. Um, the base stats, right? Oh, you max Q that. first, and there's no scaling on the bonus damage to monsters. There's no scaling on the percent max HP damage, right? His base damage got buffed, not his AP ratio. So this is all just from getting levels. So you can just be one of those Maokais, right? You farm a little bit, and you are just a ganking machine. I know for sure I'm playing this in solo queue and in uh, Summoner's Rift because um, Early game jank, uh, early game junglers that gank, j jankers, <laughs> early game ganking junglers that don't need a lot of um, resources but still scale really well. Like Maokai is a great scaling champion. Um, he's a tank, so th those are always going to do a lot. Um, yeah, and then I did read through the comments. August confirmed that the bonus oh. damage on the E still applies to monsters. So. There's going to be some cool clears where, right, you like it's like Shaco, right? You start your saplings in certain locations on the map, so you just get like an instant level level two or like a really fast level three, and all of a sudden you're getting ganked on like the second wave. <laughs> uh, Shaco can do that; he can gank you in the second wave of the entire game, and he can be level three. So there's going to be some degen stuff here, maybe. All right, moving on from Maokai is. <laughs> the team liquid icon hecarim the horsey um let's take a look at these changes so it's a lot basically his q flat damage is going down but his stacking mechanic is going up so he loses 20 base ad but his q also gains a five percent bonus ad ratio the percent increase that you get from stacking your q is increased from two to four percent plus a bonus ad ratio um, your Q cooldown is reduced. Um, normally it's reduced by one second, but now it's only reduced by 0.75. Super minor, honestly. Uh, and the max number of stacks you can do is two to three. That's the big buff. That's the big the big knocker here. And then your stacks don't all fall off at once. They fall off one at a time. And the mana cost is essentially just lowered. Um, his W, he gains 15 to 35 armor and MR what? while his W is active. Absolutely insane. Um, yep. His minimum damage on his E is losing 5% uh, bonus AD ratio. The max is 10% bonus AD ratio. The knockback is going down by 100. Um, that's a lot. But the cooldown is being lowered. And then, so that, those are some pretty interesting nerfs. Not as big as I would think they'd be. And then Onslaught of Shadows. This is the big nerf. Uh, the max spear duration you can get is go down from 2 seconds to 1.5 seconds. Wow. Uh, yeah, um, that so W alone. Those are the changes. just put Let's that out, Hecarim's them. instantly played tomorrow. Um, the Q stacking is great. Uh, the part where it doesn't all drop off at once is actually a yep. big deal. Sometimes you're just like trying to re-engage and you just lose all your stacks and you just become useless. Now, especially with 3 stacks, dude, this is crazy. He's going to have Q so much more often. Do not pay attention to the number going down a little bit on paper. This is just, this is broken. This is, 
his clear is going to go through the moon because it's so easy to get three stacks in jungle. Like every chicken nugget is going to run away in fear because he's just going to insta kill him. The W giving you tankiness is something that he really needed because he loves stacking health, right? In his build <laughs> and just having that kind of tankiness is nice. However, I will say it's only 15 15 because you rarely max it second. There might be an argument for maxing a second now that E got nerfed. Yeah, now that E got uh, nerfed, I, it might be worth just keeping it, especially because it's cooldowns yeah. normalized. Mm -hmm. E is literally a rank four E at rank one in terms of cooldown. Of course, it does a little less uh, knockback and everything, which is big. But dude, the Hecarim's gonna be played. Yep. This this is a, this is on the whole a buff, except for his late game engage potential, where his R is a lot weaker. Right, it lost twenty five percent of his cool uh, of its fear duration, and then after yeah um, tenacity and stuff like that like yeah that's gonna be a big deal but everything else like he's gonna be outputting so much more and he's gonna be a juggernaut uh this is what they basically try to make him i like these changes as a hecarim player and as a team liquid fan who likes horses i guess yeah uh these are nice it's gonna make him pretty over the top honestly <laughs> i can't imagine him being balanced he's probably gonna be banned quite a bit Uh, yeah, I cannot imagine this being balanced at all. I mean, Hecarim right now is fairly weak, and it's because of the E nerfs. They they nerfed his Q, that didn't fully take him out. Then they nerfed the base damage on his E, that just annihilated his win rate. Um, he will, is, whenever this champ is strong, he just takes over pro play completely because his uh, mechanics are have little to no counterplay. Um, so it's E, right? You move faster than the enemy champion and you knock them in. And um, then you have your ulti, right? So if you can use it well, it's just a really, really long CC chain combo that puts you in a susceptible position. It's like if you could have a point and click lease an insect that also has a fear. It's it's pretty crazy stuff sometimes. Those are obviously the peak scenarios where you have Luke, uh, where you have Hecarim. doesn't happen all the time. Um, I, I think that the fact that you can still knock people back, right? You can, like, the move speed wasn't changed on Devastating Charge is really crazy. The bonus damage is only down by a max damage 10% bonus AD. Like, yeah, you're still going to be nearly one-shotting people if you're ahead. Um, that's really scary. And then the fact that I didn't even touch his QW buffs, right? He is sometimes just an absolute monster in 1v1s like there are situations where if you're not the right champion or if you're not ahead enough or if you're too behind the guy is actually unkillable in 1v1s that's current state hecarim this type of hecarim is just like he is just a team fighting menace now he's going to be impossible to kill in the extended 1v1s i think everybody's going to get conqueror like no more phase rush or predator builds anymore like conqueror is going to be so so good um that you can stick in there longer i i'm excited to see how these shake out and I can't wait for him to either get instantly hot fixed or instantly nerf or just he be only needs to sneak by first one pick patch first ban in pro play. Worlds, man. Like, oh my god, this is terrifying. This stuff is crazy. Yep, yep. It is really scary. These buffs are I like when I saw these buffs like I think a week ago. He didn't have the W buff. Now that he has the W buff, I think it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's just beyond crazy. Um, I think people are going to max Q into W, so that'll also affect like his move speed stuff. But so you're going to lose out on like the crazy engages, the crazy one shot potential, the the just stupid flanks where you basically insect the enemy AD carry that's behind his front line. You insect him basically into your own team, right? That's going to happen a lot less. Uh, those are pretty degenerate stuff. But I mean, if you get even a little bit of that power into a into an engage. And then you add all this other stuff of his just sustained damage and being tankier, man, you're going to see some crazy Hecarim stuff. You're going to see some stupid shit. Um, Sunder is really strong right now. Death Dance is really broken. All of his items are in the right spot for him. Um, yeah. All righty. Well, that was fun. That was essentially the entire patch. Um, thanks for listening. Actually, Kevin, I'd like to get any last thoughts, any overview, anything... Yeah. I would you say there's a minor chance that we will we see like a change in the meta because of all the meta characters being nerfed at once. But I would, as a betting man, I would say like it's an 80% chance we'll see a majority of the same characters being picked. Like them nerfing them all at once actually makes it really hard for something new to arise because people will just be like, eh, now they're like all the same still. Um, so that's annoying. I think the reworks are good in the, on the most part. Uh, MF did get 10% mm -hmm. crit onto her alt. 
uh, from 20 to 30, which is actually big. It's 50% more crit ratio on it. So that multiplies yeah. bigger later. So she seeing her in crit bill will be it's nice. Bigger later. She might yeah. just be a typical yeah. AD care with a massive ult. Um, so I like that change to her. She's always felt kind of wonky. Like there's never a one correct build. So yeah, I, I think generally it's not a bad patch though. Yeah, I, I actually liked a majority of it, which isn't something I can always say. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I like the patch. Uh, I've been really loving these mini reworks we've been getting. We got one with swing. Sivir, we got one with Ari, we got one with Wukong, we got one with, you know, just a whole, yeah, Swain, Olaf, right, Talia. So I've actually been loving these. They always, um, you know, see a good amount of play. They're always relevant. Um, they are kind of broken in the beginning, but they do get tuned pretty quickly. Um, you know, sometimes they stay longer than they should, right? I think that Talia and Swain should see more play, and Ari sees maybe a little too much play. Sivir sees maybe a little too much play. But I'm fully expecting that if the um, you know if the trend continues, Misfortune, Maokai, and Hecarim, right? Every other champ that's got these large reworks has saw quite a bit, or at least some pro play. Then trend continues. We're going to see MF, Maokai, and Hecarim. <laughs> and I love that because... Maybe less so the Hecarim, but I, I, I want to see the tree. I really do. I want to see Maokai, right? What a staple champion that has existed in League of Legends history that is just not around anymore. Um, it was the definitive tank lane, top lane, blind pick for years and years. And I miss him. I miss the tree. So that's going to do it for us in this episode. If you like the patch preview... Um, Please let us know. Please watch it. Please comment wherever you get to catch it. And let us know if we're wrong. You know, seriously, come flame us. We'll take it. Uh, we'll answer it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can go from there. All right. Have a good one. Uh, don't be too toxic. 